everyone this is Gail and you're not seeing my face because the last time I tried this I had problems with my um, camera moving it from one place to the other there's my buttons are in a strange place or something so I am going to not show you my face today but I am going to show you uh, I had a request on my YouTube channel um, to somebody wanted me to uh, show them how to make a heart cane and there's several different ways of doing a heart cane some a little more complicated than others so I thought I would start with the easiest and I'm also going to include some tips in this video because there are several different things that I have done or that I will do to make this whole process easier. Um, not necessarily for the cane itself. Some of it is just for personal things. But anyway, I'm going to be using some Primo pomegranate. And I mixed it half and half with Primo White Translucent. And the reason I did that is because the pomegranate is such a strong uh, red. I mean, it's a really highly pigmented uh, color. So because of that, and I didn't want it to bleed into my white, uh, of course, I'm going to solve that anyway. But I just like the pomegranate better when it's not quite so saturated. So this is half pomegranate and half translucent. See, you can still see it's still, that's where it was stuck on my, I'll put that in the middle, in the center. But that's where it was stuck on my um, tile. But this is rolled out to the number one thickness of your pasta machine, or the thickest setting on your pasta machine, depending on the machine you've got. And I'm just going to fold this in half. And because this side had a tongue on it, I'm putting that on top just so I can see where I have a double thickness of the red. I also have some white that is rolled out on the thickest setting of the pasta machine. I'm going to put that aside for a minute. I have some black that is rolled out to the thickest setting on the pasta machine. And I have some black that is uh, rolled out to a number five, which is pretty thin. So, and I believe I'm going to use that first. So let me just move this over. Now to start with, first not what I need to do, because I've got black clay on my tile, is to wipe that off, or else it's going to end up on my white clay when I get to that. Now, this is, like I said, this is the pomegranate and translucent. And I have a heart cutter. And I believe, I believe it's a Sculpey cutter. It may be a fondant cutter. I'm not really sure. I don't remember. I've had it for so long. But I'm going to cut, and like I said, this is a double thickness. I've folded it in half. And I'm going to cut some of these and I'm even going to just leave it if it sticks I'm going to in the cutter I'm just going to leave it in the cutter or maybe that's not a good idea I just got to thinking about that I probably need to put that to push that out otherwise it's going to misshape when I push it out let me see what have I got flat that I can push this out with I should have a small rod I do let me push this out I was thinking about doing a shortcut but I don't think it's going to work so I'll just go back to the way original way I was going to do this and that got misshapen a little bit but I will fix that later I'm going to turn it over so that there's a smooth side so again I'm going to cut and I'm going to cut this on the card so it won't stick. I'll cut another one. It's stuck a little bit, but not too bad. So that's going to be six thicknesses. I'll cut another one. 
which is going to make eight thicknesses. You could cut these individually if you wanted, but it just makes it easier to do these um, in double the double thickness. So that's a, let's do one more. Let's make this 10 thicknesses thick. Okay, and you notice I'm putting the dented side, which I'm going to just press with my finger a little bit. I'm going to put that down. But try to make sure, try to see that these are lined up as perfectly as you can. You may have to finagle a little bit. But working with this clay, you're, um, you're going to get a lot of red clay on your hands. So tip number one was to mix it half with translucent clay. Tip number two, I'm going to show you in a minute which will make it easy. I just had my blade. It's the only thing, when I come in here and try to straighten up to do a video, this is not the blade I was talking about. I don't know where my other blade is. It was a thicker blade than this. But anyway, you can always take the blunt end of your blade to refine the point. So that's another tip. When you're making a heart, you can refine your point. And that's pretty much all we're going to do right now with the red. Now we're going to switch over to the white. But I have red on my fingers. So what I'm going to, what I'm going, another tip that I have for you, and I'm going to show you this. This is a very inexpensive um, hand cream. Matter of fact, it's made by Kroger. It's got the Kroger emblem on it. It's a very, um, I don't know how to say it, but anyway, just cheap. It was a cheap hand cream. It says extra dry skin lotion. And what I do when I get polymer clay on my hands is I put a squirt of this on and I rub it all over where I have my clay. And then I wipe it off with a paper towel. And look, all the red clay comes off and it doesn't dry my hands because it's hand cream. Of course, at the end, after I see all the red that came off of my hands. So this is a good way to clean your hands in between colors. And it keeps your hands from getting so dried out. Polymer clay does have a tendency to dry out your hands. And I'm going to throw this away so I don't try to use it again. You see, no more red on my hands. So now I'm going to take my double layer of white. Well, I'll tell you, I haven't doubled it yet. I'm going to try this one. But again, let me wipe off my work surface. Hand cream didn't clean that off. And I'm going to... This is just a thin thing, but this is also the thickest, thickest setting, and I'm doubling it up. And I'm going to cut... I don't know why any other time these would not stick in my cutter. I probably should have put cornstarch on my cutter, but I just didn't think I would need it. But one. No, I'm doing this wrong. Let me use my other clay and I will re blend this. What I'm going to do is it's going to be double, but I'm going to cut this into, let me put my cutter on here to see, I'm, let me make a sharp edge here. 
and a sharp edge there. And just make sure there's a little bit of a border around it and cut a square. And there we go, and cut a square. Now I'm going to, actually I'm going to use an acrylic block. I'm going to straighten up my heart and just press this in. And pull it out. I'm going to make another one the same size as that one. And I'm going to cut this one out. And I think, I don't think I'm going to have enough. I may have to use that other little strip. Try to make this the same width, or at least close to it. It doesn't have to be exact. But we know this one. And then I can put this here and cut this one. So we have four. I'm going to need one more. Let me push this white out. Now this I'm not really concerned about because we're not going to use this white. We're going to use the frame. And let me try to place this hopefully in about the same place. If you don't have a heart cutter, there is another way to make a heart. It's, it's much more complicated. But if you don't have a heart cutter, you probably ought to buy one. Because how many times do you want to make hearts? So let me take my clay that I cut out a little while ago by mistake. I knew I had this for another reason. the piece off where I cut it and let me just put this on top to cut it the same size I may as well just leave that there and put put my cutter down in there I'm showing you the acrylic block just because it, if you have a problem with your fingers and the cutters, the acrylic block really helps a lot. Alright, so now we have our heart, which is five of the double layers thick. And we also have five of the white frames. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them in half. And I'm going to assemble right around the heart. Just take your time, get it lined up pretty well. Then take the next one, and cut that one in half, and you just do this all the way up with all of your thicknesses. This is the one I should have put on my card. So it would turn. Just put the point down in your point. Bring it all the way around. And do the same thing on the other side. Put your point down in the point of the heart and press it together. And you keep doing this until you've got all five of these on. And 
mean, this is just one way of making a heart. There's lots of different ways. There's, um, you can, well, it doesn't do any good to tell you, I guess, but you can roll a log. And if you want to wrap it in something, you can wrap it in another color. And then take the blunt side of your of your blade again and just crease down the center and it will make a heart shape. But I've been more successful with this one as far as keeping my heart shape. All right, now you can look and see that, you know, it's not all pressed together all the way around. So that's what you need to do. Make sure you press down on the top. You just need to make sure it's all together. But I had a request from one of my YouTube subscribers for a heart cane. So this is for her. And I will be putting this on my YouTube channel later. So there is our heart cane. But I'm not happy with just this. So who wants just a plain old white? background. So I'm going to trim I don't think that was straight down. It didn't feel like it. I'm going to just trim this a little bit on each side. can't tell what I'm doing too well because if I got where I needed to be to see how I was cutting, my head would be in the video and I'm sure you don't want to see my head. And I'm right, it didn't cut very, very straight. Let me put it on its side and just straighten it up a little bit. like these two sides were the only ones that didn't get real straight. Okay, so I've trimmed that down and this is what I had originally made the other little um, white strip for, but since I didn't do that, please, I apologize for the noise, but I am going to have to roll this I'll try not to make it as painless as possible. But I need to make some, enough to make a double layer of the white. I'm just going to roll it through one more time to get it. Okay, I'm finished with this red, so let me just get it out of the way. So I'm going to take the white. That's going to be just perfect. Oh, I know what I the the black I was going to wrap around the red, but that's okay. It would define it more if I had the net, the thin black around it, but that's all right. I forgot it because I got messed up on my clay. But I'm going to make a black and white stripe cane and put that around the edges. You know me, I, well, maybe you don't, but my YouTube subscribers know that I love black and white. And I'm just cutting off the ragged edges just because of time. I know there's, I can get it done in other ways, but it would just take too much time. So then I have my black that is also cut, uh, rolled to the uh, largest setting of my pasta machine. 
And I'm going to lay this on top and cut and cut my black. I'm going to lay the black on top of that. And I'm going to turn it over so I can cut it. Actually, I'm going to go ahead. Well, now I'll wait till I get the other white on there. And then I'm going to lay the white on top of that. It's not quite long enough, but that's all right. I can make do. So I will even this up all the way around. really difficult to cut straight when you're sitting so far away from your clay. But if I sit, like I said, if I sat where I could lean over. Okay, so I have a double layer of the black and white. I'm going to cut that in half and I'm going to measure because I'm, that's another thing I don't do well. And that's three and a quarter, so that would be one and about an eight. Going one and let's see, maybe right there. Doesn't look like half. Wasn't quite. Put your black and your white together. Even up your ends. Actually, that's not necessary. And then you make some slices. And I'm going, well, maybe, let me see. That might be a little bit too thick. Let's reduce this a little bit. And I'm going to use Teresa Salgado's square pairs. Because I have really found that this is the best way to reduce a square cane. You just squeeze it and turn and squeeze and turn and you just keep doing that and it will get thinner this way and wider that way. Which is okay. You just keep turning and squeezing. hope I'm in the shot. I should be, unless my camera moved. I have a problem with my camera holder that doesn't always seem to stay where I think it is, you know, where I think it is. You see these stripes are not quite as thick. See the difference? I think those stripes were just a little bit too thick. I'll just go a few more times. Let me make sure it's square. At this point, I can probably just pull it a little bit because I'd like to have it. Oh, yeah. I can cut this in half now. So I'm going to cut this in half. And then I'm going to make some slices. Just maybe an eighth of an inch thick. I'll probably need both halves of my cane. But I love to decorate with black and white stripes. Let's 
some of these weren't very even but I will start here and I'm going to just press them on the side and again I didn't cut very even because I can't see what I'm doing but I'm overlapping the white here on the end because what I'm going to do with the next one is put the black up next to it so that we still have a black and white and put the black up next to that one and you can see if this was a little straighter I'm going to leave the black on this side just need to push it in a little bit overlapping and put the white next to that one here so they butt up to each other just makes a nicer looking corner and so I need a white one to go up to that one and that ended with a white here so I'm going to put a black put it up to that one I have these little pieces but I think I'll just cut another slice a couple slices off of this this is the other half remember I said I needed a little bit more than the one thickness of cane so let's see how this works so you can take your blade if you want and kind of go up against it to make it straight so you can see that the black is the one that's sticking out here so we'll cut off at the white didn't get quite all the white but you don't want to scrape too much there that's good enough and I could put this in there and just kind of make that fit you ever done that just made something fit You want to square these off where's my hair so you can use your acrylic block for that too you can just press and press and it will square off your cane slice off the ends didn't go quite far enough do the same thing on the other side but there's our cane I kind of like this now you can take this and reduce it again you can use your square pairs if you happen to have those if you don't I'm going to leave this side the way it is because you always have um, one end that you're going to lose anyway so let's just press with the block if you don't have the square pairs you can do the same thing with a block although I do highly recommend the square pairs and just press and press 
until it starts to get a little bit smaller and longer. Then you can take your rod and roll. I'm showing you a couple different ways to reduce this, so you just use what you've got. When you do this with the rod, you always turn it over and do it the other way also because it seems like you always have a different pressure on one end than the other. So this keeps it square and flat. Then you'll get to a point where your clay is beginning to move. This is still not quite there. And when I say that, the inside is a little bit firmer than the outside because it's been sitting longer. I've been messing with the white and the black. Normally I would let this sit for a couple hours or put it in a refrigerator or freezer for about 15 minutes. And then everything gets to the same temperature. But Reduce this down, and you could make cute little heart charms. Reduce it down to maybe half an inch. And then slice it and bake it, and you've got a lot of really cute heart charms. Try to keep your lines as straight as you can. And when you see how it's now it's beginning to give, because everything now is the same temperature or the same consistency. And you can just start to pull. And every once in a while, take your roller. Flip it over. Leave that there so you can see the original size. And just keep reducing it down. Some people like tiny little charms. Some people like bigger charms. So let's just stop here. Um, I happen to have a longer piece of acrylic. That's another thing I can tell you. When you go like to Michaels or Joann's or anybody that AC Moore, anybody that does framing, they have these scraps of acrylic that they where they've cut out a frame or something and they throw them away. So if you happen to hit them when they're in a good mood, they will gladly give you their scrap pieces of acrylic. Now, how would how is that for a heart charm? You could even go smaller. I might go smaller on this side since that's the one with the funky end. Although this side kind of has a bad end too. But see the difference in this size and this size. I like it. I and I'm I love I love black and white, but I also love black, white, and red. So I'm going to let leave that one. Let me cut a piece off so you can see that one. And I'm going to go even smaller. Now, I didn't keep the large heart, you know, any of that, because I really don't have a use for a heart that big. Maybe some of you might, I'm losing a little bit of white right here, and I'm going to just stick a little ball in there. To fill in that little hole. It's one th another thing I've learned is how to fix things. Where's my little s here? You don't want to get it on your black. But you can just fill in that white and then cut the excess off with your blade. Might have to shave just a little to get that where you can't see it. 
anyway so that's two sizes i'm going to go down kind of small because there's some whoops pulled it too hard you got to be careful and not to pull i get impatient especially when i get talking i get distracted and don't pay attention to what i'm doing square it up again there's this one aren't they cute so I hope you like this um, like I said it was a request from one of my YouTube subscribers so I hope she is getting what she wants out of it if not please let me know I'll be so happy to redo it a different way if you can't do it this way so anyway I appreciate you watching and I will see everybody soon bye bye